Hi, my name is Randy Agert, and this is for the class Bad Words and Taboo Terms. In this video, we're going to be talking about coprolalia and Tourette syndrome. Coprolalia itself is a condition that causes people to swear uncontrollably. Now, I find that a lot of people confuse Tourette syndrome with coprolalia, that many people I talk to think that Tourette syndrome is just a condition that causes people to swear uncontrollably. But in fact, it's a symptom of Tourette syndrome, and it's not even a very common symptom. Most Tourette's do not have coprolalia. And in fact, there are other conditions besides Tourette syndrome that can cause coprolalia. But we're going to be focusing on Tourette syndrome because it's the condition that most commonly has, that, has coprolalia as a symptom. As I was saying, most Tourette's do not have coprolalia. This is a symptom in less than 15% of Tourette's. Another thing that's important to understand is that coprolalia is not just simply you know, swearing a lot. It's not people who just simply swear all the time. These are eruptions. These are actual tics. So these eruptions are not part of normal speech. They're not just thrown into a sentence. They disrupt the patterns of normal speech. The timbre of voice is entirely different from usual speaking tones and the eruption occurs at grammatical pauses. Another thing that we should understand is that the eruptions are often anticipated. Um, uh, sometimes Tourette's will compare these eruptions with, say, a sneeze, where you can feel it coming on, but you can't fully push it down. You can't fully stop it from coming, but you know it's coming. Now, the truth is, that just as with a sneeze, where you can push it down for a while, most Tourette's find that they can suppress it for short periods, and the period lengths may differ from individual to individual. So as an example, um, there was a, an interview with a DJ who had a pretty severe case of Tourette syndrome, and coprolalia was one of his symptoms. Now, obviously, for a DJ, that's a pretty bad thing because you don't want to swear on live radio. But what he found was that as long as he was on air, he could push his coprolalia down, and he didn't have any of these eruptions. But as soon as he pushed the off-air button, they would come out. Right? So he knew that he wouldn't make a mistake while he was on air, but he kind of his, his Tourette's, in a sense, compensated for it when he was off air, and so then he would, you know, sort of release them and they would all come out at once. Another th thing that we find is that many Tourette's can transmute their coprolalia to a non-taboo form. So one example uh, that I've seen in a, a documentary involves a doctor who has a, a pretty severe case of, of Tourette syndrome, and one of his tics is to say the word fuck. Now, most of the time, he's able to transmute that so that he says, look, instead, which is far more socially acceptable. But many coprolalics say that this is not as satisfying to transmute it, that their Tourette syndrome, really to be satisfied, wants the taboo. And that's something that, that I, I hear a lot from, from Tourette's as they talk about the Tourette syndrome as though it were a separate entity for themselves. And I've even heard some people go so far as to name their Tourette syndrome, you know, call it Fred or something like that. Now, although the eruption may be a Tourette syndrome compulsion, there is a social component to it. And that, that's kind of a confusing aspect to it, that although they seem to be random eruptions most of the time, there does seem to be some context involved. So, for example, uh, one Tourette described how when they would be in an airport, they would have a compulsion to say, there's a bomb on the plane. Clearly, that's not going to be something that you would say just anywhere, right? It's not something you're going to say when you're at a Starbucks in the middle of town. It's only going to be a, a compulsion in an airport. Another person described how they would want to say the word nigger when they saw a black person. 
they didn't feel like they were racist. You know, they, they felt that this was a, a Tourette syndrome compulsion that didn't have anything to do with their own feelings. But it was sort of the, the Tourette syndrome wanting them to do something that was socially unacceptable. And it was especially unacceptable when there would be a black person present. We also find that there are differences for different countries. This is something we'll talk about in a separate video. Right now I want to step back and talk about swearing in general. So Timothy J makes a distinction between strategic swearing and automatic swearing. So strategic swearing is usually a grammatical part of a larger locution, like he's a dickhead, or she was so scared she shit herself, or what in the hell are you doing with that spoon? It's a conscious part of a speaker's utterance, and it's uttered with a communicative purpose, right? So we do it strategically. Whereas automatic swearing is generally going to be single words or pre-constructed phrases like shit, or cocksucker, or fuck you, or sweet mother of God. It's not entirely conscious. It seemingly just comes out. It's triggered by strong emotions. However, it is somewhat controllable, right? So we can control it. We can prevent ourselves from saying shit when we're, say, near our grandmother or when there are children present. So there is some aspect of consciousness there. And the other thing is that it may not have any obvious communicative purpose, right? You don't go, Hey, you, shit, right? And also, we notice that a lot of times people say shit even when they're entirely by themselves. So there's not necessarily a communicative purpose for it. It's often just purely to emote. So with that in mind, coprolalia seems to be more similar to automatic swearing than to strategic swearing. However, it's important to recognize that they are not the same, but they may originate in the same place. And this last point brings us to the brain. So in a future video, we're going to be talking more about this. We're going to be talking about disorders in the brain that cause us to have some sort of haywire swearing.